Welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Pi. We're going to be looking at probabilities of compound events. We'll be working with Prentice Hall's Algebra 1, Copyright 2009, Lesson 27. Today's objective is finding the probabilities of independent events. That's one of two objectives in this entire lesson. Independent events are events that do not influence one another. When we find the probability of two independent events, we have a little rule. If A and B are independent events, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. The most important thing for you to see or understand here is the multiplication. When you're finding the probability of a compound event, we're going to be multiplying those two probabilities to find the overall probability. So we have two parts in a whole, really. Two parts in a whole. And we got to find the whole by multiplying in this case. When this happens, this event happens first, A happens first, then B happens second. So let's take a look at a couple examples involving independent events. Example 1T, independent events. Suppose you roll two number cubes, one red and one blue. What is the probability that you roll an odd number on the red cube and a multiple of three on the blue cube? Now, what I want to go through first and do is highlight or actually mark the two probabilities. Now, I know where the probabilities start because of the word probability. What is the probability? The sentence starts here. What is the probability that you will roll an odd number on the red cube? So that would be our odd number on the red cube. Now, here's how I know it's compound because of this word and. And the other probability is a multiple of three on the blue cube. So I define those events right here. First event, because of the way the problem reads, odd number on the red cube, let A equal rolling an odd number with the red cube. And then I let B equal rolling a multiple of three with the blue cube. And I actually get it that time. I rolled an odd with the red cube, and I rolled a blue, or a multiple of three with the blue cube. So when I go and go back and write down the equation uh, from the previous page, where we have the probability of A and B, where A happens first and B happens second, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And that's equal to now, we find the probability A, which is rolling an odd with the red cube. When we roll, uh, there are three odd numbers on the red cube. So that would be three out of six, three favorable outcomes over six total outcomes, times the probability of rolling a multiple of three on the blue cube. Now that probability, a multiple of three, there are two multiples of three on the blue cube. Three and six are the multiples of three. And there are six numbers on the blue cube. So we can go ahead and multiply this out. A couple ways to do it. A lot of students just like to go 3 times 2, which is 6, and 6 times 6, which is 36. Then, of course, you need to simplify this fraction. And we do that by dividing out the common factor of 6. 6 divided by 6 gives us 1. 36 divided by 6 gives us 6. So the probability that we're going to roll an odd on the red cube and then a multiple of 3 with the blue cube is 1 sixth or 1 out of 6. We have 1 chance out of 6 of getting that. Which also, if we change to a uh, percentage, is 16.6%, and that 6 does repeat. Example 1S is very similar to example 1T. We were rolling two number cubes, one red and one blue. What is the probability that you will roll a one on the red cube and a multiple of two on the blue cube? Not that time because I did not get a one on the red cube. So to do this probability like we did before, I define A as the first event, which is rolling a 1 with the red cube, which is right here. 
And I know that's a probability because it tells me what is the probability that you will roll a 1 on the red cube. And the second probability and or event I define as let b equal roll a multiple of 2 with the blue cube. So using the equation from before, these are independent events, so I need to multiply, and I'm going to cut this down a little bit, the probability of A times the probability of B. Since we know they're independent events, since they don't affect one another, I know I multiply them. So the probability of rolling a 1 with the red cube is 1 out of 6 because there is only 1 one on the red cube, and there are six numbers on the red cube. For the probability of B, rolling a multiple of two with the blue cube, a multiple of two is, there are three multiples of two on the blue cube, which would be two, four, and six, and there are six numbers on it. So then we multiply that out, three times, one times three is three, and six times six is 36, and that does reduce to 1 over 18, which is approximately 5.5%. Actually, it's exactly 5.5 repeating. So 1 over 18, 1 out of 18 chance, and I reduce this by dividing by 3. So there were two independent events rolling number cubes and finding the probabilities of those independent events. Here are some key words when solving problems. In example 2T, selecting with replacement, meaning whatever you take out, you're going to put back in. Let's see how that works here. Suppose you have three quarters and five dimes in your pocket. You take out one coin and then you put it back. Then you take out another coin. What is the probability that you take out a dime and then a quarter? Well, we have two probabilities here. Um, the first probability is taking out a dime. The word and tells me it's a compound probability. And then taking out a quarter. So the way I'd like to write this is uh, similar to what we did before. The probability of A times the probability of B. Now notice, I'm not going to define variables here. But I'm writing it out, keeping myself straight. The probability of A times the probability of B now, I'm going to rewrite that as the first event, which is taking out a dime, the probability of a dime times the probability of taking out a quarter. By writing it like this, I define A and B as taking out a dime, then taking out a quarter. So I have to figure out my probabilities. Now, to figure out the probabilities, I need to know how many coins I have in total. The total number of coins <clears throat> is equal to 8. I get that by taking 3 plus 5. 3 quarters plus 5 times gives 8 coins total. So when I do my probabilities, that'll be my denominator. My denominator is going to be 8. First probability is taking out a dime. There are 5 dimes, so that's 5 out of 8. And I will multiply that by the probability of taking out a quarter. Once I take the dime back, I put it back in. So my denominator is going to remain 8. And since there are 3 quarters, the numerator is going to be 3. To solve this, I multiply 5 times 3 to give 15. And 8 times 8 to give 64. This fraction does not reduce, and it's approximately 23%. Remember, changing a fraction into a percent, take 15, divide by 64, then multiply by 100 to get approximately 23%. Here we have example 2S, selecting with replacement. Again, selecting with replacement. Key words when working with independent events, compound events, which happen to be independent. Suppose you have 10 $1 bills and 5 $10 bills in your pocket. You take out one bill and then put it back. That right there tells us replacement. Then you take out another bill. What is the probability that you take out a dollar and then a 10? So my two events 
taking out a dollar and taking out a ten. The word and means it's a compound event. So go, sticking with the probability of A times B, the first event is taking out a dollar, so probability of a one dollar bill. And I need to multiply that by the probability of the second event, which is a ten dollar bill. Before we continue with this, we need to figure out the total number of bills. And the total number of bills is 10 plus 5, which gives us 15. So there's 15 bills, so our denominator is going to be 15. So the probability of taking a $1 bill out is 10 over 15 times the probability of getting a $10 bill, which is going to be 5 over 15. Notice the denominator is the same because it's an independent event. There's 15 bills each time we go to take it out. Uh, a method you can use to reduce before you multiply is cross-canceling. Um, I look at 5 and 15. 5 divides into 5 once. 5 divides into 15 three times. Uh, on the other side of that, 10 and 15 can be divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So now I multiply the new numbers in the red and the blue. 2 times 1 is 2. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So the probability of choosing a $1 bill and then a $10 bill is 2 out of 9. Changing that to a percent, that gives us approximately 22%. This has been working with compound probabilities, independent compound probabilities to be uh, specific. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment.